Hello and welcome to Advanced Chemistry. I'm Dave Hicks. We're going to talk about types of intermolecular attractions. When we finish this, you should understand the three types of intermolecular attractions, know their trends, and be able to identify the intermolecular attractions or intermolecular forces that are present in various molecules. I'm going to present these intermolecular forces, these three intermolecular forces, in order of weakest to smallest. So our weakest intermolecular force would be called a London dispersion force. London dispersion forces are caused by the polarization of electron clouds. And you know that atoms or bonds are made up of nuclei that have electrons that are in some way orbiting or vibrating around the electro the uh, the nucleus itself well just randomly at times some of the electrons may accumulate on one side more than the other just through random motions that causes one side of the atom or the bond to become temporarily negative and the other side temporarily positive. This is what we call polarization of the electron cloud and it's a completely random and temporary event. Factors that can increase the intermolecular force of London dispersion forces would be if we had more electrons. The greater the number of electrons the more polarizable the electron cloud is because of the randomness of those electrons. Molecular weight is a good way to try and identify it because the greater its molecular weight then the more electrons it's going to have and uh, so that's one way to try and identify it. Just remember that identifying it with molecular weight is not the reason so it's not uh, a greater intermolecular force because it has more molecular weight uh, that's only just a way to sort of spot it and the correct reason is the polariz polarization of the electron cloud. Uh, also the surface area of the molecules themselves and this is especially true when we talk about hydrocarbons I have an example here. Um, here is pentane, a straight chain pentane it would have the highest intermolecular attractions isopentane would be lesser and neopentane would be the lowest and uh, we can tell that because this is a straight chain and then this one here is is branched right so the more branches it has the lower its uh, intermolecular attraction is the lower its London dispersion forces are and that's because of the surface area of the molecule the polarization effects take place along the surface of the molecule within the bonds and they allow them to be attracted to other molecules so uh, the more surface area I have then the greater chances of polarization along the outside here some of those electron clouds are going to be hidden inside of the molecule and won't be able to affect other molecules around it so uh, surface area also has an effect on the London dispersion forces. Some of the molecules to look out for that uh, are highly associated that have maybe only London dispersion forces and that would be noble gases, diatomics like nitrogen, oxygen, hydrocarbons, we just saw those, uh, they're fairly nonpolar bonds between carbon and hydrogen and then any other nonpolar type molecules that we have out there. I have a video on polar molecules so if you can't tell what a polar molecule looks like you may want to check out my video on polar molecules and uh, get some information on that. Let's take a look at our next intermolecular attraction that would be dipole dipole forces it's caused by the dipole moments of polar molecules. They have a positive end and a negative end and the positive of one molecule is attracted to the negative of the other molecule. Kind of like a magnet. These are permanent dipoles within the molecule and so they have a greater attraction for each other. Uh, the greater the electronegativity differences in the bonds creating the dipole moments is going to increase the uh, intermolecular bonds there, the dipole-dipole forces. And then finally, uh, what types of molecules should you be looking out for? Any polar molecule is going to have this. By the way, um, 
all molecules do have London dispersion forces. So if it's a dipole-dipole molecule, it's going to have dipole-dipole forces and London dispersion forces. Just a point of record there. Finally, let's take a look at hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is present whenever hydrogen is bonded together with either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Um, whenever we see hydrogen and nitrogen or oxygen and fluorine bonded together, you're going to create some hydrogen bonding. This is because nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine highly electronegative. That's the royal family of an electronegativity. And uh, the <clears throat> hydrogen only has one lone electron. So as that electron cloud is shifted towards those very electronegative elements, it's left with no shielding whatsoever. It's like a bare proton hanging out there, which has very strong effects in the world of molecules. Uh, so what can increase it? Well, fluorine being the most electronegative is going to be the highest uh, whenever we have hydrogen and fluorine uh, bonded together. Also, uh, the number of hydrogen bonding sites on a molecule can also have a profound effect. Associated molecules, you can see here that uh, we've got the three, water, ammonia, and hydrogen fluoride. But there are some others that are sitting out there that might not be as obvious. One would be a sugar. And in sugars, you can see around the sugar molecule that we have several of these OHs. right? And they're all around. All different types of sugars have these OHs. And uh, it's these oxygen hydrogens that create points of uh, hydrogen bonding. It makes them very soluble. Sugars are solids at room temperature, right? Um, what else do we have here? Alcohols, same thing. An alcohol has this OH right there on the end. Sometimes you have multiple OHs on some alcohols. And then finally, the last one that I have an example of here is an amino acid. And here's an example of an amino acid. And you can see with amino acids, not only on the carboxylic end of the amino acid over here, do we have an OH sitting there. And that's going to give us some hydrogen bonding. On the other end, we have the amine part of the amino acid. And here I have nitrogens and hydrogens that are together, also giving us a place for hydrogen bonding. Hey, let's try some questions that I've developed to uh, see how your understanding of these types of intermolecular forces is going. So I'd like you to be able to tell me what type of intermolecular attractions are associated with each of these molecules. Go ahead and hit pause. Take a moment to answer this. I'll be right here when you're ready. Okay, how did you do? Let's uh, identify the types of bonding with each of these. Here's a diatomic molecule. So we said with a diatomic molecule, the only thing that it has is just London dispersion forces, right? So, uh, and it doesn't have many electrons, so this is going to have very, very weak London dispersion forces. Down here I see one of my nitrogens and hydrogens that are together. So I definitely got hydrogen bonding present in this one. But ammonia is also a polar molecule. So I do have dipole-dipole forces. And of course, every molecule has London dispersion forces. The predominant one here is going to be hydrogen bonding. Here's a methane molecule. And I have carbons and hydrogens that are bonded together. We know that carbons and hydrogens tend to be a fairly nonpolar bond. And this being in its sp3 format is going to form a very nice symmetrical tetrahedron. So the only type of bonding we have present in this are going to be London dispersion forces. Here on first glance, we might think, hey, we got hydrogen and nitrogen in the same place. But a quick uh, Lewis structure here might clue us in. And you can see in this Lewis structure that the hydrogen is not bonded to the nitrogen, is it? So uh, we do not have hydrogen bonding present in this one. 
However, this is a nice linear molecule with a very electronegative element on one end. So it is a dipole. So we're going to have dipole-dipole interactions. And of course, everything has London dispersion forces. Here's methanol. It's an alcohol. There's the OH on the end. We can identify that. In organic molecules, they like to write these OHs around wherever they're present. That way, we can look at it and say, aha, there's Lund or excuse me, hydrogen bonding in there. Uh, this sometimes is considered a polar molecule. Mm, that's, you know, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, so could we consider it a dipole? Eh, maybe. Uh, I'm going to skip that because the predominant one here is hydrogen bonding. And, of course, it does have London dispersion forces. Finally, down here, I have dihydrogen sulfide. Again, I'm going to do a quick uh, Lewis structure of this. And uh, I can see sulfur and oxygen in the same family, so it forms that nice bent shape that we have here. And uh, the um, electronegativity of sulfur is a, a little bit more, I think, than the hydrogens. So that's going to make this a little bit of a dipole. And uh, since it's a little bit of a dipole, it is going to have some dipole-dipole interactions. And it does have London dispersion forces. Probably, however, these two are probably going to be pretty close to one another because there's a lot of electrons in the sulfur. But maybe the dipole might be the predominant interaction there. Maybe not. Okay, well, I hope you're feeling a little more comfortable with intermolecular attractions. And uh, I hope to see you again uh, through another video series. Until then, have fun with your chemistry.